Faust, Act One, Love of the Damned, Rebel Edition. Faust was a book I found whenever I was probably about 14 or 15. Um, I found this through a comic book store. It probably should not have been sold to somebody uh, that age. It's a very violent comic. It's surprising to me to see it in Wizard Magazine because it is kind of a fringy book. Um, it's been published by North Star, and then this is actually a reprint edition from a couple of years later after it had caught on and after they had done several more issues and had built a cult following and it was a bit of a collector's item. So this is Act One, Love of the Damned, Rebel Edition. And you can see on the cover, there is a, a cutoff head in Faust's hand. Um, he has two claws similar to the popular Wolverine style claws. Faust is kind of a NC-17 cross between Wolverine and Batman. And uh, the Grim Reaper is, is very apt for this cover. Faust is a bit of a, an unhinged personality. He spends a lot of time, one of the characters is his psychoanalyst. And uh, we see things that Faust sees, which are demons and stuff that appear in his eyeballs and around him whenever he's performing these violent actions. So I think that these skulls with the glowing red eyeballs are appropriate for that. This edition starts out with an introduction from um, former comics journal editor Greg S. Baisden talking about the background of Faust, um, his experience when he first encountered Faust, how it compares to something like The Dark Knight Returns in that it is violent, um, certainly more adult in some ways than your typical superhero comic book, although mature may not exactly describe the work. Um, in a lot of ways, it's very basic in terms of the violence. But uh, anyway, as we progress, there's a small intro from the writer David Quinn and the artist Tim Vigil. This is the book that I think built Tim Vigil's reputation. This is probably the book I think most people associate Tim Vigil with when they think of Tim Vigil. And uh, we see an early version of Faust here, an early drawing. They talk about the background a little bit and whenever it started in Chicago and people passed it by and quickly it was a sought after collector's item, so. There are a few voices that run through this comic. One is a reporter who is kind of following a crime family, but also crosses paths with Faust early on, so he's often remarking on violence from a writer point of view, a journalist point of view, something that we might have seen in Daredevil, Frank Miller's Daredevil run. And you can already see some of the violence here. Um, a guy shot in the eyeball, Faust showing up. Uh, a lot of the graphics of this comic that stood out to me as a, as a kid when I was reading this is that it's very gray overall. There's a lot of feathering, a lot of brushwork, um, a lot of zipatone or duo shade in some issues. And then whenever Faust would cut someone, the inking was just pure black and it really made the blood stand out. Uh, you can see it here, cutting, cutting off a guy's head and, and blood just pouring out everywhere. Um, extreme, extreme violence. Uh, this was right up my alley. I was super into this. You see the beautiful inking that Vigil's employing there in the clouds. Uh, the other part of Faust that makes it not kid-friendly is the sex. So, you know, we get this very early on here. Um, with a pimp and a hooker, a John trying to, I guess, pick her up maybe. This is the reporter character out chasing vice stories at night. We get to see a little bit more of the sex that is a major part of this comic. And again, it goes hand in hand with the beautiful rendering. All right, so Guy and girl hooking up whenever the door is kicked in by violent thugs. This crime family shows up. They're after this guy. Uh, very cartoonish character designs here. They waste the guy. Declare sex is dirty. Cool lettering sound effects. And then they turn their attention to the girl. And we get a close-up reflection of the gun as, as they execute her. 
Now we're back to a mental hospital, and this is another character whose voice we see throughout the book. Um, this is the former doctor who had helped um, John Jaspers. That's Faust's uh, alter ego. I guess he was criminally insane, again, thinking of Batman. Um, <laughs> Will Eisner, also a member of this, uh, <laughs> Howard Shaken, Ditko, John Buscema, um, probably Neil Adams, I'm guessing not Art Adams, but who knows, Gil Kane, Miller. So you get to see probably some of the influences on um, Tim Vigil and also some of the popular cartoonists uh, throughout history that probably influenced this book as well as uh, any cartoonist at the time period. So she's in an argument with the head of the hospital and quits her post over whatever went wrong with John Jaspers. He died under anesthesia. He, uh, the head of the hospital doesn't seem to care. Um, John's therapist, however, does not like that, does not accept that. So she resigns and leaves and goes out to, I guess, uh, maybe drink away her troubles. When Faust is not killing people, um, he's an artist. So this is actually one of his, his pieces. More reference to Batman. creeping over his city. This book is full of tormented characters, so we often see expressions of anguish, whether it's in characters that are actually physically suffering or uh, a visual representation of their mental anguish. We get out on the streets, thugs accost the writer, Faust watches this and then, of course, intercedes. I assume that's a reference to Chinatown, the cutting of the nostril. <laughs> Faust pays that back, very biblical, and then some. The thugs always talk tough, but they don't last. Again, the black blood. Oh, gutting this guy. Full page splash. Great use for a full page splash. Get to see the reporters just shock at what's unfolding in front of him. Skull inside of Faust's eyeball. Constant violence. At this point, he's asking who sent this guy. Uh, whenever the guy doesn't give him an answer he likes, he throws him through a window face, uh, car window face first. The car crashes, of course. Then he pulls him out and continues his interrogation, continues not to be happy with the answers, eventually cuts the guy's head off, gives it a kiss, and then throws it at the feet of the uh, reporter and, and his psychiatrist. And we see the demons that are haunting Faust all around him. Reflection of all the main characters here, including the dead guy thinking about his upcoming funeral and Faust's demons. And that's where we end. Uh, very melodramatic with their emphasis on real. This was her attempt to describe the blood that uh, surrounded this patient. Uh, real is the word they settle on. And Faust flees off into the night, much like Batman would. One last bit of uh, sex and violence here to close out the book. Prints that were available of Faust pages, interesting way to present original art. Um, something we don't always see, but portfolios were a popular thing that a lot of publishers and uh, cartoonists would do in the past. I'm not sure why we've moved away from that. I would be interested in one of these portfolios of his, uh, of his art reproduced on a large scale. And, Faust posters, very large posters too, 22 by 36 inches is not messing around. Um, this is Claire, she goes on to be one of the thorns in Faust's side. Um, this is a notorious cover from issue four of the original run, uh, very violent. You can see this guy's head is almost decapitated at the jawline, uh, held together by two claws stabbed through his head while 
uh, John Jaspers is naked with only his claws uh, on his wrists and the demons that inspire and possess him. And that's it, Faust number one, featured in Wizard Price Guide number two.